It's a big name in Delaware today, but what role do the DuPonts play in the Civil War? I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me this hour is Lucas Clausen. He is a reference archivist at the Hagley Museum and Library. Thanks for being with us. Glad to be here. We're talking about the DuPonts and the Civil War, and this is an exhibit at Hagley, but talk to us a little bit about that connection, because you say there is a strong connection between the DuPonts and the eventual outcome of the Civil War. Yes, the DuPont family ran E.I. DuPont de Nemours and Company, which was one of the largest gunpowder manufacturers in the United States in that period. They eventually ended up making about half of the gunpowder used by the U.S. Armed Forces during the war. So when we think of the eventual outcome of the Civil War and the Union victory and the gunpowder used, how important uh, was that gunpowder in that eventual victory? We think of the Industrial North playing that role, but how important were the DuPonts? quite important. Without gunpowder, your weapons don't fire. You know, it was quite an important industrial operation for the North, you know, and they were constantly af afraid that the Southerners would come and take it. You know, that fear was that if you take out the E.I. DuPont de Nemours and Company, then the North can't continue the war. You can't continue the war without gunpowder. Now, when we think about Delaware and, and the geography of Delaware, what what role did that play as well? What decisions in Delaware were made at the beginning of the Civil War that eventually played a role in the outcome of the Civil War? Because Delaware really could have gone either way. It could have been uh, gone with the Confederacy. It could have gone with the Union. What kind of decisions were uh, played out in Delaware and what kind of decisions were made within the DuPont family? Delaware was uh, quite a vulnerable place. You're, you're awfully close to Virginia. You're awfully close to Maryland. You know, Robert E. Lee, whenever he invaded Maryland in 1862 and Pennsylvania in 1863, came awfully close to Delaware that the U.S. Armed Forces had to guard this area, you know, guarding the, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, guarding the uh, Chesapeake and Delaware Canal, guarding the Susquehanna River, all of the avenues of approach to Delaware. It was really an important place, you know, not only because of the DuPont Company, but because of Industrial Wilmington that there were companies there that made things like railroad cars, they made ironclad battleships for the Union Navy, you know, they made everything from clothing that went into soldier or made a cloth that went into soldiers clothing to the shoes that they wore. You have an exhibit that runs through 2012 and, and really the catalyst behind this is the 150th anniversary of the start of the Civil War. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that we'll see in this exhibit. Not only will we learn about the DuPont family and that industrial component, but we'll learn some personal things about what happened on the home front as well. That's exactly right, that the DuPont family and the Wilmington community contributed to the war effort in more ways than just sending their family members off to fight and also through the gunpowder factory that a lot of the DuPont women, one of them being a Louisa Gerhardt DuPont, the wife of the company owner Henry DuPont, uh, was, was part of efforts to help raise money for widows and orphans, you know, part of efforts to send supplies to soldiers in the field like socks and gloves and scarves, you know, raising money for hospitals, part of the United States Sanitary Commission, which was a large organization that helped contribute to soldiers and their families during the war. The centerpiece of this exhibit is a large flag. Where did, that, where did that flag fly? The flag flew over the William Bush Tannery in downtown Wilmington during the war. That it's a large 18 by 9 foot flag. You know, it's, it was quite a prominent item then and it's very prominent now. When you walk into the exhibit space, it's set up to be the centerpiece. It's a centerpiece, so whenever you walk in, it's the first thing you see. So really, we'll learn a little bit about the, the history of, of Delaware, the history uh, of the Civil War, but really there, we make these personal connections with a family, but this family is reflective of, of a larger effort that was happening throughout the Wilmington and, and greater Delaware Valley and the greater region during this time period. Yes, absolutely. You know, that they, just because they were a wealthy industrial family doesn't mean that they didn't contribute, you know, didn't pull their weight, as it were, during the war. Right. A very interesting story to be told, and all of this happens at the Hagley Museum and Library, and it runs through 2012. Thanks for being with us. Glad to be here. We've been talking with Lucas Glosson. I'm Jill Horner for Comcast Newsmakers.